Hello children, welcome to Sunday School with Mrs. Aboro. I believe we're set for today's lesson. Let's dig right in. Uh-huh. Now children, how are you likely to respond to any of the scenarios I'm going to paint? Now, say you are watching your favorite TV program, a cartoon, I guess, <laughs> and you're called to run an errand. You're watching uh, maybe Teen Titans, right? That's what you could call it. Or Pop Off. Or what other cartoons do you could watch? <laughs> Sophia the First. Uh huh. I know some of them, you know. Say you are watching your favorite TV program and then mom calls you to run an errand. How are you likely to respond? Or you're playing your video game and you're called, oh, please get me a bottle of water from the fridge or pick up this, tidy this. How are you likely to respond? How will you react? Will you move immediately? Or you're doing your homework and you're called to dinner. Will you leave your work immediately? I hope we're thinking. Or you're playing with your friends outside and then you're called. Hey, booby, it's time to get inside now. It's time to have your bath. How are you likely to respond? What would be your reaction to these interruptions? You know, um, you may not be happy with any of the interruptions because you enjoyed or you're enjoying what you were doing. You're engrossed in them. You know, most times when we are interrupted, especially when we're doing things we like, we don't take them lightly. Well, children, in the gospel reading of today, we will hear how the first disciples responded when Jesus interrupted their daily routine. Let's take the gospel now from Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 23. Are we ready? I'll be skipping some verses, okay, to make it shorter. All right. Now, when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been put in prison, he left Nazareth for Capernaum, which was by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting their nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. Oh my, Jesus interrupted them, and immediately they followed. Well, going further along the shore, Jesus saw two brothers, James and John. They too were fishermen working in their boats. They were with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. And Jesus also said to them, Follow me. And immediately they left their boat and their father and followed Jesus. The four fishermen followed Jesus as he set off for towns in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God and healing people of every disease and sickness. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Now, children, we read that after G um, John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus left Nazareth for Capernaum, okay? And Jesus stayed there preaching the gospel. He started his ministry preaching in Capernaum, that region, okay? And as he was walking by the sea, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew. They were fishermen. They were fishing casting their nets into the sea. And Jesus said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they followed Jesus. And going further to Jesus, um, called James and John, who were with their father Zebedee, he also called them, Come, follow me. And they followed Jesus. Immediately they left the old man and followed Jesus. I bet their father will be wondering, Hey guys, where are you guys going to? Are you going to leave me here all by myself? Well, they followed Jesus. Now, children, it's very important for us to note that fishing was the occupation of these men. Fishing was their job. Simon, Andrew, James, and John, they were fishermen. They sell fish. They fish, they sell them, and they care for themselves and their families too with whatever they make. Fishing was their source of livelihood. Fishing was a serious trait in Jesus' time. In fact, one must be properly equipped, you know, having a strong boat and net. And you must be ready to wait long hours at night by the river. Of course, waiting for the net to get some fish. <laughs> okay. 
they must be patient, okay? Fishermen are patient people because you must wait. It was hard work as the boats need maintenance. The nets too, when it, um, um, uh, uh, nets can be very heavy, especially when they were full of fish. So you see, it's a whole lot of work. It was an important job. These men, um, Jesus called, had important jobs. They were doing something very, very important when Jesus interrupted them and called them to a new life. They were traders. They had a skill. They were doing something important, but they got interrupted. But you know what? They followed. They obeyed. They moved. They didn't complain. They didn't grumble. They just hearkened and they followed. What have we learned, children? That these disciples, these first disciples that Jesus called, didn't grumble or complain. We too should learn not to grumble and complain, especially when our parents ask us to do things. Remember that when we obey our parents, we are obeying God, okay? Yes, and we too can be Jesus's. We are, not can be. We are Jesus's disciples, okay? Because we have chosen to love Jesus and to follow him. So we shouldn't complain, complain and grumble when our parents ask us to do certain things, okay? Yes, they mean well for us and they are like, um, people who God has placed over us. So when you obey them, you are obeying God. So we do not grumble or give excuse or complain when we are interrupted with certain things we are doing, especially those times when you're watching cartoons, you're asked to do something else. I know many of you grumble. <laughs> so let's try not to. Okay, children? Yes. And we should also learn from our parents. The disciples were ready to learn from Jesus. Yes, the Bible says that they went with Jesus, teaching in the towns in Galilee, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of heaven. They were ready to learn. In fact, they, they equipped themselves by learning from Jesus. We too should learn. Read our Bibles, pray, go to church, and we get to learn these things from our parents. Yes, our parents model these things for us and we follow. Okay, we're all disciples of Jesus if we listen, obey, and follow. Okay, children? Yes. So let's not get upset when things we tend to be engrossed with, we are interrupted in them. Let's pause, obey, okay? Especially our parents, our teachers. Let's learn to obey, okay? Because by so doing, you're obeying God. You're following God. You're being a good disciple, a friend of Jesus. Is that okay? All right. Let's take our memory verse and it is from Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. It says, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Let us pray. Position for prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for catching us in your love. Help us to follow you with all our hearts. Amen. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We come to the end of today's Sunday school. Jesus loves you and he cares for you. Till next Sunday, it is by. Remember, you are Jesus' disciple. If you obey, you walk with him, okay? Yes, and you can do this by listening to your parents, obeying them, not grumbling, not putting up funny faces because you're asked to do something. Oh, no. Let us learn to obey them, okay? Obey your teachers. Be kind. Be good children. That's where you're being a disciple of Jesus. You are also working with Jesus and for Jesus in carrying out his work on earth. Okay, children? All right. It is bye for now. God bless you.